Hello, Year 3, and here we are again, I'm afraid to say. Um, this is your first maths lesson of a new unit. OK, so I'm just going to share my screen with you. There we go. It's a bit tricky for us teachers. I hope you can remember everything that we've got to do. I had to do a little bit of a reminder of how to record all of these lessons and what to do, because it's been a while since we had to do it. Um, OK, so here's uh, the date and the Walt for today's lesson. So if you've got a book, then hopefully you can get those written down. Uh, so today's Walt is to interpret a pictogram where the symbol represents multiple items. That's quite a long Walt today. So our new unit is all about statistics and um, you might call this data handling. So we did this in one of our computer units. So hopefully you can remember what we did there because there's a lot of things which are the same. OK, so I'll just give you a moment to write down the date and the Walt. And if you've done that, you can have a think about what a pictogram might be. And some of these other words in the Walt as well. What does interpret mean? What's a symbol? And what's a pictogram? OK, so what vocabulary will we need for this unit? So what sort of things will we be saying and what will you be hearing? So here's all the language, here's all the vocabulary for this unit. So we've got the words pictogram, symbol, represents, scale, bar chart, data, table, row, column, and category. So look out for those words over the next few lessons. So what is a pictogram? And here's Colin to help us. Um, and he tells us that a pictogram uses the same symbol to represent information. And we know from our computer lessons that information is data. Data is information. So a pictogram is using pictures or symbols to represent information. So let's have a look at some. Oh, here's a pictogram. This looks like it's about ice creams. Um, you can see on our little um, pictogram down the side, we've got days. So on day one, day two, and day three. And then across the top, we've got number of ice creams. So what does this pictogram actually show you? Let's have a look. I think maybe on day one, that's telling you how many ice creams were sold or maybe eaten. So on day one, maybe you ate, hmm, how many ice creams do you think you ate on day one? I think it's three. And on day two, you can see that there's one ice cream. And on day three, there are two ice creams. So the information in this pictogram, pictogram sorry, um, is showing you the number of ice creams that have been eaten on those particular days. And on the side here, we've got something called the key. And then there's the little picture of the ice cream and the picture of the ice cream equals. So what do we think should go just here? What's missing? We need to know how many that picture of the ice cream represents. So I think, the picture of one ice cream represents one. There we go. So now if one ice cream picture means one, we can interpret the pictogram. So on day one, there were one, two, three ice creams eaten. And on day two, there was one ice cream eaten. And on day three, there were two ice creams eaten. OK, here's another ice cream, this uh, ice cream. Here's another pictogram all about fruit. So down this side, we can see we've got the different fruit and the number of children who chose it. So we've got pear, watermelon, orange, apple and banana. So here's a question next to it. How many children chose pear as their favourite fruit? How do you know? So. Let's find where pear is, there it is. Oh, and luckily we've got some pictures of pears as well to help us. So how many children chose pear? So let's count them up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So 
I could say that seven children chose pear because there were seven pictures of the pear. Hmm. How many children voted for their favorite fruit? I think all together. So I think we'd have to use the pears and add up all of the other fruits as well. So we know there's seven pears and then there's one of each of all the other fruits. So that would be seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. So I think 11 children voted all together. But there's something a little bit wrong with that last pictogram that we saw. Um, what's missing? Okay, what if one picture didn't mean one picture? So one picture of a pair didn't mean one pair. It could mean something different. So what might be hiding underneath my green box here? What is missing from this pictogram? You know? Okay, so what's missing is a key. And here's Coco telling us what a key is. Not a key that goes into a lock. The key explains the value of the symbol. So one picture of a pair doesn't have to mean one pair. What if each whole piece of fruit was worth five votes and not one? So the picture of the pair would equal five, not just one. The picture of one watermelon would mean five watermelons. So how many people voted for pears now? So we're not going to count in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We would need to count in fives or seven times five. So this would be five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35 people now would like pears because one pair now is worth five votes. And how many people voted all together? So that would be 35. And then each of these is also worth five. So 35, 40, 45, 50, 55. So there would be 55 children who voted all together for their favorite fruits. But this was because the one picture didn't mean one fruit, it meant five. So here's quite a tricky one. I had a look at this one earlier. So here's a pictogram of cupcakes and we've got the days of the week down the side. And maybe this is the number of cupcakes that were eaten on those days. But let's have a look at the key because this time the key means six cupcakes. So a picture of a cupcake doesn't mean one cupcake, it means six. So Let's have a look at Monday. So if each of those cupcakes is worth six, on Monday, we would have one, two, three, four, five times six to see how many that would be. So five times six would be 30 cupcakes. So 30 cupcakes were eaten on Monday. Um, but what about this here? This is showing kind of half a cupcake. So if one cupcake picture means six cupcakes, what would half a cupcake mean? Can you work that out? Yeah, that would mean half of six. So that would be three cupcakes. Okay, so could we work out a different day? What about Tuesday? So the whole cupcakes are going to mean six and half a cupcake will mean three. So this would be six and six and three. So that would be six and six is 12 and three more would equal 15 on the Tuesday. Okay, Wednesday is one, two, three, four cupcakes, but we know that cupcakes mean six. So that would be four lots of six or four times six. So that's going to be 24. Oh, I've changed colour. Okay, what about Thursday? Look, we've got another one of those half cupcakes. So should we work that one out? So that's going to be worth six and six and six and three. So that would be three lots of six, which would be 18 
and three more 18, 19, 20, 21 on Thursday. Maybe you'd like to have a go at Friday, Saturday and Sunday. I'll just give you a moment to do those ones. Remember, a picture of one cupcake doesn't mean one, it means six cupcakes and half a cupcake means three. Maybe just pause the recording while you have a go at Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Okay, should we check them? I'm going to change colour again. <clears throat> so Friday had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pictures and each one means six. So that would be seven times six and seven sixes are 42. Saturday, goodness me, lots of cupcakes here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Goodness me. I hope that's not just one person eating cupcakes. So ten pictures means ten times six. That's a nice easy one, isn't it? Ten times six is sixty. Okay, and then Sunday. Oh, there's just half less. So would there be an easier way of doing this? I could do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times six and then add on my three or I could just take three off that. So my answer would be 57 cupcakes. Good, well done if you manage those ones. Okay, here's another pictogram. This time not pictures, we've got more of a symbol this time. You can see these orange circles. And what does each of those orange circles mean? Oh, here's the key on the side. So one orange circle equals 10. And these are the days of the week and children who had hot dinners. So on each of these days, we can see how many children had hot dinners. So here's a little generalized statement in the corner from Colin as well. So one symbol represents 10 items. So how many symbols represent how many items? So let's have a look at Monday. So a whole circle is going to mean 10, and then there's another 10. So what's half a circle going to be? Well, it's going to be half of 10. So that half a circle there is going to mean five. So can you see how many children had hot dinners on the Monday? be 10 and 10 and 5, which would be 25. So 25 children had hot dinners on Monday. Tuesday, we haven't got any half ones, so that's just 10 each for those. So 10, 20, 30, 40. 40 children had hot dinners on Tuesday. Wednesday, again, a nice easy one, 10, 20. Um, how many on Thursday? It's just one half a, of a circle. So half of that means half of that. So that would be just five children on the Thursday. Ooh, obviously not a popular day for hot dinners. And Friday, 10, 20, 30. Oh, sorry, my three's not very good. There we go. So... Now we've found out what each of those represents, there's other information that you can get out of the pictogram. So this is the interpreting the information. So you can say something like, well, um, Tuesday was the day where children uh, mostly had hot dinners and Thursday was the lowest day. You could say that on Friday, five more children had hot dinners than on Monday. You could say that on Tuesday, double the number of children had hot dinners from Wednesday. So once you've got this information and you've worked out the numbers, then you can interpret that information a little bit more. OK, so here is your do it. This is on the um, daily planner for you as well to have a go at. So we've got two pictograms here, A and B. 
And these are all about birds that have seen in a garden. So maybe on two separate days. So in pictogram A, one of the circles equals three birds. And on pictogram B, the circle means four birds. So you need to solve this for both of the pictograms. So how many robins were seen? So I'm going to go through A with you now, and then you could try B on your own. Um, and then you've got the go deep and go deeper to have a go at as well. So let's have a look at A, where we know that a circle, that symbol represents three birds. So how many robins were seen? So I've got two circles, so that doesn't mean two, because we know that a circle means three birds, so that's three, and that's three. So that would mean there were six robins on that day. So how many robins were seen? It would be six. How many more pigeons than thrushes were seen? Okay, so this is a little bit of a harder question because we need to, we can't answer that until we know how many pigeons and thrushes were seen. So let's work out how many pigeons there were. So I've got four circles, remembering that circle means three birds. So that's going to be 12 for the pigeons. And how many thrushes? Oh, just one circle. So that means three. So how many more pigeons than thrushes were seen? So we're finding out the difference between 12 and three. Okay, and that would be nine. Nine, 10, 11, 12. So the difference, how many more pigeons than thrushes were seen? There would be nine more pigeons. How many birds were seen in total? So that means I need to add up all of the circles all together. Um, so the one we didn't work out were the finches. So that would be three, three, and three, or three times three, which would be nine. And then all I have to do is to add them all together. So that would be six and 12 and nine and three. Okay, I'm gonna leave you to work that one out. The other way of doing that is you could count all of the circles, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 circles all together. And 10 times three is 30. Okay, maybe that was an easier way of working it out. Okay, I'm gonna leave you to have a go at pictogram B. So just the same, but this time working it out where the circles mean four birds. Okay, so just pause the recording while you have a go at that. And here is your go deep and go deeper. I think these are quite nice ones today. So have a look at the go deep. Coco thinks that one more person likes maths than music. One more person likes maths than music. Explain why she is incorrect. Okay, so have a look at the pictogram, but really important, have a look at the key for that one. Could you use any of Colin's statements or Coco's hints to answer the go deep? And then the go deeper, the pictogram is about favorite ice creams again. Label what the flavors could be. So the box, the square means four people. So you've just got to fill in some flavors of ice cream there, but then can you write three statements about the pictogram and also ask three questions? Okay, maybe have a look at some of the questions that you've already seen, um, which would help you with that one. Okay, well done everybody. That's the end of your maths lesson for today.